Today we're going to talk about boats. I love RC boats. We don't have enough of them here on the channel. So every time I have the opportunity to review one, I of course jump on it. And the boat we're going to check out today is Pro Boat's new Sonic Wake V2. I loved version one of the Sonic Wake. Actually, there it is back there. That was such a fun boat. I took it out a bunch this past summer and I called it my basher boat because I really abused that thing. Never really trimmed it, didn't maintain it too much, and it put up with everything that I put it through all the way to the end of the season where the last battery pack, I hit a branch in the water. It took out the prop and the flex shaft and the servo, but I already have that thing fixed because I'm gonna run it again. But they'd have a version two now, and I'm really excited about this one. This one has a lot of changes done to it. So let's head over to the workbench and check it out. Here it is, the Sonic Wake V2. What a great looking boat. This is a 36 inch self-riding deep V ready to run. And this thing is capable of going over 50 miles an hour. And we're going to try that out. But first up, I'm going to tell you guys about all the details. And we're going to start off by talking about the hull, which is pretty much unchanged. Uh, the deck, the hull itself, the canopy, all the same. It's just uh, new graphics on the outside, basically. Uh, all the changes are inside the boat and on, on the transom. So, you know, first up, let's go over the, the boat hull itself. Again, 36 inch, it's a deep V, so this thing is gonna cut through waves, gonna handle really well on the water. Uh, it is self-riding, so see these holes up top here? This is what allows water to get into the hull, and uh, once it self-rights, it rolls over. Once this pod fills up inside here, uh, water spills out the back when you, you start going again, which is really awesome, but it works really well. This thing, I don't think I ever had to go get this boat when I was driving the version one. There's the version one back there with the white hull. And actually they offer this one as well in two different colors. So obviously we got the black, uh, red and yellow version here. And then they have the white, purple and teal version. And uh, I went with this one because it's uh, different from my first version. This is gonna look really good on the water. Uh, sealing off the canopy, we've got the four thumb screws. There is uh, foam uh, underneath, so it helps seal everything up but really good looking hull. Let me just kind of flip it over really quick so you can see the bottom there. Nothing has really changed and it really was a good performing hull. Uh, when I was driving that thing, like I said, I didn't really tune it at all. Uh, I had a couple of videos of me submarining that thing. It was just kind of wild, but the hull held up. I never had any durability issues with it, no cracking or anything, even along the seams. So uh, the, it's a great hull. The changes, like I said, are on the inside and on the transom. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab my V1 so we could kind of compare the two so you could see up close all the changes that they make to it and why you might want to get this boat even if you have version one or if you're looking for a new boat you can see all the cool stuff that they did to it. So at first glance these two boats look really similar out back and it wasn't until I took out my calipers and started measuring everything that I noticed a bunch of changes back here. So let's start off with the uh, version two. The turn fins on this one are a bit longer than version one. So uh, you're going to have more turn fin in the water for better handling. Moving over here to the trim tab. So we got this nice trim tab with a screw to make uh, adjustments to the trim tab. With the version one boat, you had to basically go and bend the tabs and hopefully you got the two equal. Here, you can now go and measure uh, with this screw how many turns you've gone down on the trim tab to trim out your boat and you can make it equal on both sides. So I really like that change. It's a nice aluminum mount here for that screw. So everything is nice and solid. Then uh, let's go over to the strut. So at first glance, again, I thought the struts were the same, but no, this one is actually a bit longer than the original version. Uh, and that gets the prop out behind the boat a bit more. Now moving on to the rudder, uh, the, the mounting bracket for the rudder is the same from what I could tell, uh, but the rudder itself has changed up. So we've got a shorter and longer or deeper, I should say, uh, rudder on this one than the original version. You can see it's a pretty tall rudder over here, a little, little less deep than this one, and that should help cut down on some of the drag. And you'll also notice that uh, we have two pickups now. So one is dedicated to the speed controller and one is dedicated to the motor, where on the original version, we had uh, this one tube right here, cooling the brushless system in that one. And then if you look uh, closer at the rudder, we have a new arm on here. Uh, it does have two screws securing it in place. And we had that over here as well. 
I actually kind of like this version a little bit better. It uses a larger screw to secure the, the bracket to the rudder, whereas with this one, we have two smaller screws. So uh, as long as you know they've locked tight of these in place properly, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. I don't think you're ever going to snap that off. In fact, if anything happens to your rudder while you're driving it, you've got that shear screw over there, which will just allow that rudder to tilt back if something happens to it. And then uh, let's see, there are your water exit tubes over here when you go in self right, and it does have a plug out back. So if you get any water into the hull, you can go pull that plug out and let it drain. And while I'm back here, let's talk about the steering rod. There's a change there as well. We've got this nice ball end linkage now. Uh, we've still got the, the boot there to keep everything waterproof, but we got a nice solid rod with a, a ball end on it. Whereas the other one, we just got this capture clevis out back and this has now been relocated to the inside of this boat. And uh, I'll just pop the canopies off so we can take a look inside the boats now. And there's a lot of changes inside the boat as well, more than just the electronics. So here, let me give you a quick look at version one. And now check out version two. And the first thing that really stood out to me besides the electronics was the inner skeleton. And they did this on the Blackjack 42 as well. The boat up there, there it is. Uh, but what's really nice about this is we, we have this ABS hull, which you know we know that plastic flexes, but now that they have this inner skeleton in there, it helps reduce that flex. And when I push on the bottom of this boat in comparison to the original boat, you can tell that there is a flex difference. There is a lot less on this one. And this uh, inner skeleton runs all the way back here, integrates into the electronics, even the motor mount as well. Uh, kind of a new battery setup. As far as just the design, it, it's still in the same location location, but uh, it seems like there's more bracing under the batteries as well. And just uh, really quick before I get into everything, you know, there is some foam flotation up front in both of the boats. That's still there. And I like that they even have it on the canopy. That is key. Just in case this thing blows off the dock on you, it'll go and float. All right, so let's get back into the design here. And again, this inner skeleton goes all the way back and then in integrates into the motor mount. You can see the servo is now laid down in this boat uh, versus the other boat where it stood up. So it lowers the CG just a tad there. And uh, there is that clevis mount that I was talking to you about versus just a Z bend on this old boat. So this setup much nicer than the original version. Now let's look down at the, the motor mount because I wanna go over that before we get into the electronics. The motor mount is now aluminum on here where the original version was a composite plastic. So you have a much stronger, sturdier motor mount here uh, to help keep everything solid, no flex, and it feels just really solid now. There's still the clamp on the front as well, just to really keep that motor secure. And my, while we're here, might as well start talking about the electronics. So we have a 1900 kV four pole spectrum motor in here to power this thing. And uh, that has made it up to this 120 amp spectrum Firma ESC. This is a ESC that will definitely handle the power system that you're gonna, you know, the, the battery packs that you're gonna run through here. You're gonna wanna run 100C, 3S packs, two of those. So this speed controller is going to handle it. And uh, it does have the telemetry features in there. However, you really can't take advantage of that. I'm gonna talk to you about that when we talk about the radio system, uh, but let's just move on really quick. It is fitted with IC5 plugs here, and you can see that telemetry wire. The receiver is now nicely mounted inside this box. It's a Spectrum uh, 315 receiver. So the box will keep it water resistant and uh, you can still access it if you never ever need to get in there quickly versus ripping two-sided tape off the receiver and then having to reset that one if you ever needed to do any work. But the uh, antenna just comes out this uh, uh, fuel tubing here. And then the servo is the S605. Uh, and this is a plastic gear standard servo and it actually served me really well inside of that boat. Kind of wish it was a metal gear though. Uh, maybe when I hit that branch, it would have held up to it. But the, the plastic gear does work fine. The, the torque on there seems to work well for, at least for what I was doing is just going out and bashing with this thing, which was so much fun. Uh, but you can see here is the on off switch and the set button. So you go program uh, the internal features of the speed controller and everything is really nicely routed. All the wiring is nicely routed and the motor coupler looks you know fairly easy to access. So when you have to go take that apart to loop up the flex shaft, shouldn't have any problems accessing any of that. And I kind of forgot to talk to you guys about the, uh, the prop here. It appears to be the same prop. I forgot to check the part numbers prior to the video, but it kind of looks like the same pitch. Don't quote me on there and I do like that it, it comes with a double nut here from the factory to make sure that thing is secure. 
But that's really all you need to know about the changes. So there are a lot and they are significant. And I think they're gonna make this boat handle even better, perform even better. But before we head out to uh, try this thing out, I wanna show you what else comes in the box. So we've got the SLT3 transmitter. And this is kind of a bummer. I really wish they would have had the DX3 transmitter because that shows you on the top, the battery voltage, which is a really nice feature in boats. Uh, but on the other side of things, this does work really well. This is a good radio system. It is a budget radio system. They do give you AA batteries. Here is your manual. Here's some Velcro tape. I don't know exactly know why they give it to you, but it is there. Uh, there is a little rudder guard. This little piece of rubber slides up onto the rudder to protect it when you're you know, in transport. You get a pro boat decal. There is your antenna and they actually give you some shaft grease. So you could go and relube the flex shaft, which is really cool. I kind of wish they gave you the wrenches so you could go and take apart the coupler, but they don't do that. Um, and it's just two 10 millimeter wrenches. A lot of people have those. It's not a 10 millimeter socket, which is always lost. <laughs> That's a benefit. All right, guys, enough talking. Let's head outside and let's see how the new V2 performs. All right, guys, here it is, the first run with the V2 out of the hole. And of course, a boat went by right before this, but look at this thing. <laughs> it's taking those waves with no problem. All right, this is cool so far. Yeah, it's got some pickup. There we go, some motor. <laughs> I love it. Look how smooth this one is right out of the box way smoother than my v1 and i love my v1 oh spun it let's get back on it comes out pretty good there we go nice what a rocket i gotta go kind of far out from shore because some boat guys are just here and churned up a bunch of sticks so i don't want to bust anything on the bottom of the hull don't want to rip a rudder off but man the handling on this is on point Killer. Nice smooth turns and this thing just stays on it. Look at this. Oh, that pole. I gotta stay away from that pole over there. But this thing, look at that, coming at us. Spraying some water up, love it. It handles so good. Just give it some nice wide turns so it stays on throttle. Killer. Yeah, I, I like it more than my V1. I'm just thinking back to the last summer because I drove that thing so much last summer, the V1. This V2 is just going to be a blast. What a beast. Awesome. Let's head back to the workshop. 
So I showed you guys the features of the new V2. I showed you the boat in action, and now you're probably wondering, how fast does it go? Well, when the camera was off, I threw in my GNSS, went a few laps around the water, pulled it in, and I had a 41 mile an hour run, which is pretty cool. 40 is fast, anything over 40 is fast, but the box art says it does 50. And if you look closely at the action, you can see a lot of the hull is in the water. So to get that 50 mile an hour mark, I think you're gonna to need to do some tuning. And uh, I like to show you guys the boat right out of the box so you can see how it performs. Uh, I did have the batteries all the way back. They're Spectrum 100 C packs. And uh, you know it was able to click off that 41 mile an hour run. And towards the end of the run, uh, when I did pull it in, when the batteries were dumped, uh, it was still running at 40 miles an hour. So that's a pretty respectable speed right out of the box. Really did enjoy driving this boat. I think much more than my V1. I think it was just a little bit more stable in the tighter corners in the V1. And I think maybe that's because of the rudder change. So, you know, this seemed to spin out just a little bit easier, um, but handling wise, it was a lot better. And there was obviously a, a sound change. You know, I think with the V1 boat, you could hear the hull resonating. And with this one, with the inner skeleton, everything is firmed up a lot more. So th there's definitely a sound change. I think the, the hull itself is just much more stable. Plenty of power on this thing, takes out of the hull pretty quick and just a fun boat to drive. You know, my I gotta complain about something though. Uh, you know, this SLT3 radio system, I, I really wish this boat came with the DX3 so you could have the telemetry on there. I mean, the boat fell off a plane when the, uh, the battery dumped and I was able to get it back to shore, but having that meter on there, it was just so cool. Uh, when I reviewed the Blackjack, it was just awesome and I'm kind of spoiled, I want that now. This is a good radio, you know, I put these in a lot of my Tamiya kit builds uh, so they're good for that and, and it did operate just fine but I really wish they made that change. The other thing I noticed is the flex shaft ate into the stuffing tube just a little bit right after the coupler. Uh, I don't think it was grease there. And I probably should have checked that. It probably should have been grease from the factory. So there is a little bit of plastic shred there, but I did pull the flex shaft out and nothing else is damaged. Heat wise, uh, the electronics seemed to be just fine. I was able to put my hand on the water jacket once uh, I was done running the boat. I even put my hand on the uh, ESC heat sink. That seemed to be fine as well. And it was warm. So maybe in higher temperatures, I was running in 65 degree weather. You might want to watch that, but overall, the boat seems to just go awesome. I love it. Love the self riding feature the most, even though I didn't have to use it and didn't flip the boat over. It was that stable. Again, a lot of hole in the water, but uh, if something does happen, that is just an awesome feature to have. All right, let me know what you think about the V2 in the comments section below. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. I'll have links in the video description. Throw the video a like. We'll see you back soon for some more RC driver videos.